Welcome back again from the break. I hope you had something really refreshing so that you are ready for the next presentation. Title is Heliotherapy in Ancient Greece and Today. So the first question I want to raise is why Greece and not Egypt? Because we thought or some of us think that the heliotherapy um, has been fun founded uh, in Egypt about four or five thousand years ago. Um, we do not have robust scientific data that this really is the case. What we know is that um, in Egypt we had a kind of sun worshipping um, that we had um, sunlight uh, treatment or uh, using the sunlight for um, hygienical purposes and that the Egypts were praying to the sun as the highest god but not all the time during all the periods in ancient Egypt. Um, here we see Amenhotep the fourth or Echnaton, Echnaton, um, he was the one who tried to establish a monotheism um, with the sun, with Aten, this is part of this name, Aton or Aten, with the sun disk as the highest power and as the highest god. And therefore we find this um, life-giving force of light symbolized by Aten, by this sun disk in many many pictures um, and statues and uh, reliefs. We see another example for the sun disk and um, especially the light medicine people would interpret um, pictures like these as um, the medical or therapeutical use of um, the sunlight. Again, Aten, here we see um, Echnaton as a sphinx. And on the next slide, we see a little detail. It's the Ankh cross over here. And this is why, this is a sign, a symbol for life, this Ankh cross. I, I'm not sure, is it right in, in English? Yes. Ankh? Yes. And this Ankh cross symbolizes life. And therefore, um, it is more or less logical that people would interpret this as a um, sign for the therapeutic use of sunlight. But it is only guesswork what we definitely know uh, by the way, this, uh, do you know the names or at least one name of these three children we are seeing here on this picture, on this slide? Agnaton and Nofretete and three children. One of, of the children of this couple is uh, quite famous. Do you know? Yeah. What we know uh, about the use of light in Egyptian medicine is, for example, from Herodot. He was traveling um, in the Mediterranean area many, many years and uh, made his observations and um, wrote them down. And we know from Herodot that um, the Egypts used light, sunlight, um, for the conservation of food, that they used it for disinfection. And from the Battle of Pelusium, where the Persians were fighting against the Egyptians, he visited the places where they stored the bones and skulls, and they separated the skulls from the Egyptians and from the Persians. And um, Herodot noticed that with a little um, stone, you could break a Persian skull, but you could not break um, the skulls of the Egyptian um, warriors even with big stones because they had much, much, much bigger or stronger bones. And 
he was the first uh, suggesting that the use of sunlight was the reason for the strengthening of, of the bone structure because the Egyptians they um, removed their hair from the head and they went out into the sun and um, treated or just um, got their, the sunlight onto their skin in opposite to the Persians. They wore big heads and they wrapped themselves into black or other tight clothing. So the sunlight uh, didn't have the chance to come in contact with their skin. So they had rickets and they had thin bones and Herodot was the first, about 500 before Christ, um, who got the idea that there is a connection between bones and sun. In the 1920s, um, Kurt Hulczynski, a German um, physician, found out that this was true. How did he find it out? He had children to treat and these children suffered from rickets and he did um, photographs, radiologic photographs, x-ray photographs from both um, arms but he treated only one arm with uh, ultraviolet producing sun lamp and he could tell after a while that the bones became stronger in the other arm too. So he suspected there must be a substance distributed by some body liquid probably blood or lymph or whatever, a substance preventing rickets from treatment of one hand working in the whole body. Hulczynski, I think 1927. But back to the ancient times, we have more robust data from this famous Egyptian uh, physician. <coughs> His name was Imhotep. And, um, he mentioned that uh, in some medication recipes uh, the sun was um, mentioned in terms of uh, chronobiology. Chronobiology. More than 4,000 years ago. The Egyptians already knew when to take a medication. After sunrise or whenever the time was right, you find traces of this um, chronobiological thinking in Imhotep's material and data. Also, um, they used the sunlight for desiccation of medical preparations, to dry something they put together in terms of um, preparing a potion for healing. They also, um, he also mentioned uh, the photochemical activation of medical preparations. So if you brought substances together you would have to put them out into the sun to activate them otherwise they wouldn't work like they should. And they also knew that they had to protect several medication preparations from the sunlight because they would uh, decompose under the influence of sun. So photochemical um, ideas can be found in ancient Egypt. And we also have um, hints that they already knew about the photodyn 